Okay, you guys, what is up? The King of Lightning is here today to Hunter x Hunter 2011 episode 101 review. That is 101. First of all, <laughs> Arnold Palmer alert. Yay! <laughs> Yo, man, I'm sorry. I couldn't resist that. Alright. Yeah, I just couldn't resist that. Alright, but fuck it. Moving on. This week's episode of Hunter x Hunter, right? It's actually very simple. It really is. I forgot their names. But I'm gonna call them the, uh, Fish and Chips siblings, right? Let's get a little bit rash, alright? And most of the episode is focused on them. And what they're doing to kill the one. And their combo net. Where the badge is placed on Killua, which allows him to, like, I don't know the exact way it works, but it's, like, because the back's placed on him, it's, like, his essence is now the dart board, and then the brother throws the darts at the darts board, and then if he fails, or if he doesn't actually get the, uh, points accurately, then all the damage that Killua suffers transfers to them, and they die, so... But still, still, most of the episodes on them. But those, but that main focus of the episode is not my favorite part. Actually, I have two parts that I, that I like a lot. The first part that I liked a lot was Icargo, the octopus guy, who winds up sitting at the end of the episode. But at the beginning, where it was like he was having his final wishes, because Killua, he's like, because after he tried to escape, like, bail, I'll leave it to the fish and chip siblings. No. Killua's like, gotcha. And then he's like, so tell me what that guy, that guy above, what is, well, what his powers are. And Killua knows that he can't go in the water because his buddies are bloodlusted up the wazoo. Like, they just want blood. Like, yeah. Don't eat anything at this point in time. And basically, he's like, listen. I just want to be a squid. I don't <laughs> I just wanted to be squid. And, like, the way it was, like, we see the octopus, they're on, like, the bottom. They're kind of, like, bottom feeders. And then we see the squid. It's, like, majestic. It's, like, it's cutting through the water. It looks almost angelic. And we see this octopus staring at the squid. And, like, the sun is, like, on, like, the sun rays are on the squid, and it just looks beautiful. And he's like, I'm not going to sell out my boys. And I have no qualms dying. Hopefully, I'll revive. Or I'll come back to life as a, as a squid. And then he just, fuck. It. And then, like, when you see him, like, fall down. Like, the water is twinkling and glistening. And so, like, that was actually cool. Like, because it was cool. Like, the dude was cool when he did that. To me, personally, that's the way I felt, okay? It was just cool. Him going out. Kill was like, you know what, man? You're cool. Bam. Boom. I'm going to save you. That's number one. Number two is at the end where Killua has a near he, he has a near death experience, and what we see because he's an assassin and he's killed so many people. All right, and when I forgot, I think he was either doing I forgot which arc it was during, but it was like I forgot who. No, yeah, it was okay. It was during the Green Island arc where we have. After they captured Gensuru, I think it was the guy with the monkey ability, he wanted to kill Gensuru. <coughs> Excuse me. Because Gensuru has killed so many people during the Greed Island competition. But Kill's like, I've killed more than him. A lot more. Are you going to kill me? So, Kill has killed so many people. Really has. And this is like the first time he's genuinely experienced, and to my recollection, a near-death experience. Where... He has lost so much blood where he can no longer stand up. And he is literally face down in a pool of his own blood. And at first he describes as he's taking a warm bath. And then his body starts to get cold. And he starts to have regrets. He starts to apologize to Gon. Gon, I'm sorry. I couldn't be there for you. I couldn't see through the mission. I won't be there at the end. I'm, I, I'm, I'm truly sorry. And that to me I thought was actually very good. I thought it was very good, very well depicted. Especially when it came to the whole contrast of, okay, so I'm taking a warm bath, but my body's getting cold. That, to me, I thought was actually very well done in the episode. I really did. 
And at the end, of course, Icargo. I got you, buddy. I got you, man. He's like, yeah, taco na you. And he's like, fuck it. And we go. And then we wait. And I like that. I like that. So we see in this episode that they've actually gained a new comrade. Gon has gained a comrade in the chameleon, and Kilo has gained a comrade in the uh, octopus guy. Now, the thing here, well, so first of all, now that's three Chimera Ants tour that we know are on the side of human beings. Colt, the chameleon guy, Mellow Ron, or something like that, and then Ecargo, the octopus. Now, the thing about this is that, of course, we can't follow Kilo anymore, because Kilo, he's, well, we can assume, or it's safe to assume that we're not going to follow him anymore, because he is right now being taken care of by the squid guy, and, or the octopus guy, I should say. And the thing about that is that Killua himself is right now unable to do anything. He can no longer he he can no longer continue the mission of trying to convince the people to go against Diego. He can no longer try and take out Never Pitu's controlled human. She no no he he can't do that. He's done. He's done. But those three were the, were the two best parts. And oh, by the way, also when it came to the end part. When it came to the whole thing about how he's able to actually catch the fish dart, how the fish dart pierced the outer layer of his skin and, and it automatically materialized. At that point in time, he didn't allow his brain to actually react to it, but he allowed his aura to actually move his fingers for him. And he did so by changing his aura into electricity. And then he said that gave me an idea for a new skill, for a new move. So... Killua has, even in near death, he's still thinking for he's th he's still thinking about the future. So that to me, I thought was you know also good, a hint about what Killua maybe do later on in the actual uh, arc in the story. Now we go even further. Well, let's go. Let's back up. When it came to the main meat of the episode, that the darts, it was actually cool. It really was because we see these two siblings, the fish and chips brother and sister. Siblings, Kyodai, they, <laughs> wait, no, Kyodai's, wait, is it Kyodai brothers or siblings? Uh, no, no, either way, either way. They actually were in unison, you know, they were in unison, they did their thing, Kilo, Kilo couldn't do shit, but Kilo was at a young age, apparently, and this seems to happen a lot with Kilo, where at a young age, he's, he's been through the same thing, for training purposes, oh yeah, like at a young age, I was frishing, in the middle of the Pacific. It was for training purposes. It's just like, bro, like seriously. Like, what did Silva do to you? Like, Silva was not a good pop. He was not a good pop. No way. No. And Illumi. <laughs> not exactly brother of the fucking year. So, I mean, I'm just saying. It's just that. His family upbringing's clearly, clearly extreme. But still, apparently amongst all this stuff, he apparently spent a few years or a year or two mastering darts. And actually for him, probably like a few months. And even even at that age. But he knew the whole point system. And he was able to actually predict that once he got to 40 points, he would aim for like the, I forgot what it's called exactly, but it's like the little sliver on like the top section of the board because I'm not a dark dude. You don't see darts anywhere. You, you, you don't. So, but he aims for that and the guy hits it. And then so, but Killer he's able to catch it. And then... The, you know, suction cup right there on the head, tricks the actual Chimera Ant fish and chip siblings. They inform the Dragonfly guy. He's like, yeah, I'll talk to Leo Sama. You get a you get a promotion. Like, yay, yay, yay. <clears throat> Straight pass out. That was cool too. But that's it. Oh, one last thing before I go. Gone. Gone. Because the chameleon guy is like, you shouldn't trust people that much. Gon's like, well, you said, but yeah, but I could be lying. Are you lying? No, 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 no. Not lying, not lying. We're good, we're good, we're good. And then goes, all right, fine, it's cool. But even if you were lying, his eyes glaze over. I wouldn't annihilate. And the guy starts shaking. He starts twitching. Like, huh. Like, he gets the goosebumps. He's like, fuck, my hunch was right. This kid, I don't see the limits of his power. And, oh, like, just... Motherfuckers don't know. Dudes don't know what's about to happen. What's good? Oh, you don't realize the pain done off. Oh. There's that glazed over look, man. Like just, just. <sighs> Yo, man, cats don't realize. 
but, but that to me I thought was also a pretty good part. So overall, right? The episode, the animation was good uh, as usual. The pacing, they did spend a lot of time on the middle part where it came to the whole dark thing, and I'm not saying that it was bad. I'm just saying that I was hoping that they would, or I was expecting. Well, no, I, I should say that I would have actually preferred, there we go, that they shrunk that down and spent a little bit more time on Gone and spent a little bit more time on the on the near-death experience. Because even though I like that part of the in the episode, they could have extended it, make it like actually like him have like flashbacks of his family and then like maybe like walking in like an like open flower area. Like that would have been like, whoa, like we're really there. We're really, really there. So, that to me, I actually think that would have been better, but whatever, I mean, I, I, it was still good either way. So, the episode rating overall, and of course, when it came to the story progression, they did make some, uh, well, not really, because they just got out of the cave now. So, there was progression of story, not a lot, but because, and Gon and the Killian, they're still in the same spot, they're still in the same location. But either way, the episode rating overall, I think I'll give it a good. I think good is actually a fair rating to say. So I'm done, King Lightning. Be sure to, of course, rate, comment, and subscribe as always. Peace. Have a nice day.